You might already be familiar with mood boards and understand how they're such a crucial part of the design process. But have you ever thought of doing one for travel? In this video, I'll go over different use cases for why you would make a mood board. I'll share with you why I'm creating one for an upcoming trip and why you should too. I'll also walk you through how I create one starting from gathering photos and putting it together in Adobe XD. First, what is a mood board and why are they important? Essentially, a mood board is just a collection of images, designs, and colors that when put together create a mood. You then use this as inspiration for a project. Now, I'm used to creating mood boards for design projects with the purpose of making sure everyone is on board with the design direction before I begin. But this isn't the only purpose for making a mood board. Maybe you're remodeling a home or decorating a bedroom. You might want to use a mood board to gather inspiration and make sure you have a solid plan before you execute. Another way I like to use mood boards is when I am planning a trip. And there's a few reasons for this. One, it helps me choose some of the main points of interest for the trip. And two, it also helps me think about the type of photography shots I want to capture while I'm there. Being a designer and avid photographer, it's very important for me to capture certain shots when I'm traveling. Now let's move on to how we find these photos that we'll use for our travel mood boards. I get photos from many different sources, but the first one that I look at is unsplash.com. This is because these photos are taken by people that are amateur to mid-level pro photographers, so the quality of the photos is likely to be better. They're also free to download. So here I am searching for photos of the locations that I'll be traveling to, which are Barcelona, Dublin, and Amsterdam. Another good way to discover interesting places to photograph are just to search the internet and click through different travel blogs. For example, typing in the best places to photograph in Barcelona or Dublin or wherever will give you a lot of results. You could also try searching for most Instagrammable places in and then your location. You can also search on Google Images, but these tend to not be as high quality and definitely not the prettiest photos. A favorite option of mine is to just use Instagram itself and search through different hashtags or location tags. The first nine photos tend to be the most popular and you can click through and see if they have more options. This can take a while, but it is most likely to give you more interesting photos of a place. Another good option is Pinterest. So once you've gathered all of your photos, you'll want to put them into different folders to keep things clean. And if possible, maybe even label them so you can remember these places later. Now you can design your mood board in any program you like, but in this example, I'm using Adobe XD. This program is part of the Adobe Creative Suite, and I believe it's available for free right now. With Adobe XD, you can just drag and drop your photos right onto the canvas. From here, I'm resizing, moving the position, and even eliminating some photos. You actually don't want too many photos in your mood board. Be intentional with the photos that you include. If some photos are similar, choose one and eliminate the other. When you're grouping these photos together, think about how they look. Try to pair ones with similar color palettes or a similar atmosphere together. As far as the actual layout of your mood board, there's no right or wrong answer. For this first mood board for Barcelona, there ended up being so many photos that I decided to stick with a modular grid layout where all the photos had the same height and even spacing between them. This is probably the easiest way to put together a mood board because you're not giving any one photo more importance over the other, and it's easier to lay out. But for the next one, for Ireland, I wanted to create a little bit more variety in my layout by having some photos larger and some of them overlapping on top and giving it overall more interest. 
I tried to separate the images and put them into categories. So grouping the landscape images and putting those in one area and the castle and architecture shots in another group. I followed a similar approach for the Amsterdam mood board. From there, I fine-tuned each of the layouts until I was happy with the end result. And these are the final three mood boards I created for each location. You can see how in each of them I have ideas of places I'd like to visit and the different types of shots that I would like to capture, lighting, architectural elements. These mood boards serve as a reference and will help keep these things top of mind for me while I'm there. If you're curious how this influences the photos I take, then be sure to follow along on Instagram. And if you can't get enough of mood boards and you want to see how I create them for a design project, then check out this video next. If you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, or learned something new, give it a like and subscribe for more. And just for fun, leave a comment below of the location for a travel mood board you will create.